welcome back to Rocket Right. I am Hurricane Betsy Barnes here with Dr. K. Solar, and we are very excited to have as our guest Jeff Taylor with Whitetail Properties. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. So he is representing the company at large, but he actually covers property in Mississippi. Yes. He has another, uh, I would say, colleague here in Louisiana by the name of Cade Taylor. Yeah, we're actually in Cade's territory here, so mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. we're representing the company as a whole, Whitetail Properties, and yeah. uh, Cade should join us later, I hope. And, he, which uh, is great, yeah. and, I, and, and he did sell some property for yeah. us in Kentwood, Louisiana. He's a great guy. Uh, last summer, so it was, it was great meeting him at that time. Good. Yeah. yeah, he's a great guy, really is. So something that people don't know about Kay and I, we seem to like trees in the woods and kind of space <laughs> away from everything else. And so it was just very coincidental that both Kay and I had property listed by Whitetail Properties. Jeff is my realtor in Mississippi and Kay Taylor has been Kay's realtor. And we have had nothing but a great experience with them. So we asked Jeff if he would come be our guest and share a little bit about the benefits of investing in land as opposed to investing in maybe stocks or bonds or something else and how there is such an interest as we were just talking about people from very crowded states are looking for rural property recreational and hunting property so what mm -hmm. are you seeing mississippi louisiana and across the country as a trend about how people see the benefit of investing in land yeah there's a, a really big push here in the last year especially and you know if there's one good thing that could come out of covid i guess it's making people realize that they need to slow down yeah. uh get back to nature a little bit so there's a big push with a lot of people from the cities to find that little small piece of heaven you know 35 40 minutes hour and a half out of mm -hmm. town to uh you know just get away from it all whether it's hunting recreation just to go for the weekend a little getaway spot and put a cabin on uh, they are really looking for those small tracks anywhere from 25 to 30 to 150 200 acres those are really hot right now Mm -hmm. And so you were saying in Tennessee, people are buying it up. Oh man, sight unseen from California. They are, yeah, uh, because there there are certain states that they're definitely leaving in droves, yeah. and they're looking for states that have have that, whether it's on a lake or you know outdoorsy property. Because one, people have figured out a lot of business they can do their work from home, That's so they can. could be in a little piece of heaven and still do what they were doing that's right and you know with all the insecurity out there right now uh, investments and such are not really what people want them to be but land is always a constant yeah. it's all it never depreciates it always appreciates in value uh, it holds its value very well uh, it has multiple income opportunities from it timber uh, subsidy programs, uh, lease, hunting leases. So there's all kind of different options for land and it's a very secure investment. Well, I think a lot of people are thinking that too because they're like, man, with it very uncertain, you, I mean, that's mm -hmm. the word out there with the economy. What, where do I put my money? That's right. You know, so that I don't end up losing it. The question Because Lord, the year, we don't where want do I put to. my money? It, it is because, you know, uh, you know, we all know we work really hard for it. We don't want to lose it. That's so right. where's the best place? That's and right. and I think that, that that is something that we're seeing too, something tangible. Yeah, and you've got the other uh, sideline of that is interest rates are so low, historically low. Right. Yeah. So they can, if they have to borrow or finance the property, they can get very low interest rates at a short period of time and have it paid off in a short period of time. Mm-hmm. And then if you have timber property, you can cut that timber after a period of time, mm -hmm. you know, 10 years to thin, 20 years, 25 years to cut. Jeff and I have had a lot of conversations about timber, a lot of conversations. <laughs> and so he's not just a realtor that said one day, I think I'll hang a shingle out there and call myself a realtor after passing the test. He is second generation and your son is now third generation of being a forester. That's right. So tell us a little bit about how you used to uh, learn about this growing up? Well, my father's a graduate forester, and uh, I just, you know, 
hung out with him in the woods from the time I was 10 or 12 years old, uh, just following him through and watching what he does and learn to love it. And uh, so that naturally I went to forestry school at, uh, sorry, but Mississippi State University. That's all right. <laughs> and so and that kind of fell in the same line with my son who just graduated last December mm-hmm. in forestry school. So he's a graduate forester now. So we actually have three generations in the family and uh, he's working with me. My father's retired. Uh, but he did start our business back in 1978 so uh, hopefully i can retire before too long from that part i'd I'd like to keep with the real estate for a long time because i really Mm -hmm. like that but um so he can carry on the forestry consulting business Mm -hmm. so anybody that's interested in property in louisiana in this part of louisiana they would be working with cade taylor Mm -hmm. no relation and (laughs) then if you're in mississippi if you're thinking about Finding a little piece of heaven in Mississippi, Jeff could really hook you up. And he's also a hunter. Oh, yeah. So he knows all the seasons, all the hunting, <laughs> and you're also doing forestry for different investment properties. That's right. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we, we manage uh, timberland for private landowners in Mississippi and Louisiana. Uh, on, we have about 250 active clients that we manage the timber for, and they may own anywhere from 40 acres to uh, 20,000 acres. Wow. Uh, as, yeah, as a landowner, but um, you know, they're all the same. We treat them all the same, and uh, every one of them is important because their goals and objectives are all important to them. So we try to manage for those goals and uh, help them achieve those objectives. Mm-hmm. So if somebody had, you know, a chunk of money and they're looking for an investment, how would they go about deciding which type of property? Would it be based on the value of you know whatever the money they have, or would it be based on what their long-term goals are? Like maybe finding something that timber could be hunt, uh, cut or hunting leases. Yeah, there's people have different objectives when they go into purchasing land, and there there's a wide range of uh, why they make that decision to buy a piece of property to start with. So we kind of mold our uh, management plans and our objectives as far as helping them buy a piece of property to exactly what their needs are I mean, it could be any anything from a hunting piece of property to a uh, just a recreational weekend retreat something with a cabin on it and of course it, everybody has a different budget so it's uh, one of those things you just have to dig into and, and help them that way are there some tax benefits to buying recreational timber property as opposed to just maybe buying a condo or a fourplex or something like that. Um, I know just from my experience having property with timber on it, there are subsidies that the state or federal government might give you when you replant. You cut and you get a certain amount of investment money back. You know, so would you explain a little bit about that for people? Because yeah. ladies, this is a good investment for you <laughs> ladies. Low maintenance. That's right. Yes. There's, mm-hmm. there's different, there is a lot of incentive to own timberland from, t- uh, mainly from a tax standpoint and government subsidies. We, um, we kind of control or not control, but help landowners uh, obtain those uh, incentives. But, you know, like when you cut timber uh, and, and you, you need to know what your basis is in that timber in the land before you even get started. So that's one of the Mm -hmm. things that we recommend people do when they first purchase a piece of property is, all right, know what your basis is. That way that's whatever all your uh, taxable income is going to be set back to. Mm -hmm. So like when you sell timber, um, you can uh, actually get a tax credit or uh, get it off your basis for the timber you sold. And you may not owe any capital gains tax on that because you may have just recently purchased the property and it was at the same value as, as when you sold timber. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there's government programs too, like when you if you do a final harvest on your timber, uh, there's subsidy programs or incentives to help to guide landowners to <coughs> replant. They, they want to encourage to reforest instead of leaving the ground or the land mm-hmm. fallow. So there's cost share programs available out there and there's mm-hmm. a ton of different ones and even um, when you don't cut timber there's incentive programs for doing certain enhancements on your property like even pollinator plants to Mm -hmm. encourage pollination um, planting certain species of trees there's a lot of incentive for that so there's a world of opportunity out there for landowners Mm -hmm. so people can buy a bare piece of land that might have maybe 
some good drainage not too eroded and they could actually plant trees and look at that investment coming back to them in 10 and 20 years or something to pass down to their family right. and that would increase the value of the property exactly yep sure does so what are the things that you would tell people make sure you don't get a piece of property that has this type of issue or problem like erosion would be one yeah any mm -hmm. any property that's been highly eroded uh for whatever reason uh it's you know for lack of maintenance or lack of care um you know you've really got to pay attention to what your goals are for that property you don't want to you know of course buy a piece of property in a floodplain to build a house on and right. uh, can't buy it in wetlands really can't do yeah, much with wetlands yeah wetlands are you know pretty restricted um and there's, so there's not there's not a whole lot of government restrictions on private land in our area thankfully uh, but you can get yourself into a, a pickle, you know, in certain uh, situations like that. Mm -hmm. So it might just be a good place to park your money while you wait and see what the market does, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or lease well, out. Well, and if you're going to do it, it might be great because you can enjoy it. If you find a place, like you said, that mm -hmm. you can go for the weekend, that you can hunt, and then you know that it's not going to lose its value. I mean, hey, it's a win-win, right? That's right. That's so right. Always. So if you're interested in any investment property, timber property, or hunting property, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, they can reach me on my cell phone is the best way at 601-248-9433. Or they can find me on uh, my webpage at whitetailproperties.com. Or you can go to the Facebook for Rock It Right Entertainment. We're going to be sharing Jeff's story, his bio, and some of his information. Thank you so much for coming from Mississippi. Thanks for having me. And we me. look forward to having Kay Taylor join us sure. uh, in the near future and talk about different ways that you can make money off property. And we'll be right back with Rock It Right.